My name is Dr. Marlene Carson, and I am a survivor of human trafficking. If you've ever driven down the streets of Columbus, Ohio, Main Street, Broad Street, Sullivan Avenue, you may say to yourself, what are these women doing down these streets? They look like they're sitting at a bus stop waiting on the bus, or they look like they're watching the cars go by. What is really going on? Well, I can tell you that if you've driven down those streets, you've seen prostitution. And it's just not prostitution because what you probably don't see on those same streets are the exploiters or the traffickers that actually have these women out there. You think that women sometimes may be out there on their own reconnaissance, but I can tell you that no woman, no little girl, gets to be 13 and says to her parents, oh, mommy and daddy, I just can't wait to become an adult so that I can become a prostitute. Nobody ever does that. As a survivor of human trafficking, I can tell you that this is not an inner city issue. It's just not a drug addiction issue. This is a human rights issue. As a survivor of human trafficking, I can also tell you that I was never on those streets. Well, actually one time. I was put on punishment because I was actually in brothels. I was at NFL games. I was at quarter horse shows here in Ohio. I was at Schwarzenegger Classics being trafficked. I was at the Memorial Golf Tournament being trafficked. So one time though, I was put on punishment. And the time I was put on punishment, I had to go on Main Street. And I remember thinking, I don't know what to do out here. This is so weird to me. I just didn't understand. I never had a drug addiction, so I just didn't understand it. But I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, now my perception has been changed because I saw something on those streets that one time that has changed my life forever. See, that night I was on Main Street. This man came by, and he uh, asked me, was I dating? I didn't know that language because in brothels and at quarter horse shows, your trafficker negotiates. They collect money. All you do is show up. And so I didn't understand what he was saying, but I had a lady out there with me who was my guard, so they made sure I didn't run away. So I looked over at her and I said, what, what do I say? She says, yes, tell him you're dating. I said, okay, and I tell the man. And he says, how much? Well, of course, I knew what that meant. And so over in well, a quarter horse show or any place like that, I knew they negotiated two to three to $500 an hour. Just think about that, because guys riding up Sullivan Avenue and Broad Street and Main Street are not giving girls that kind of money. But this guy did. He took out two $100 bills, and he gave it to me, and we went to the house to commit this act. But what happened next changed my life forever. He actually pulled out a Bible, and he said to me, I'm going to help you out of this. And he read to me John 3.16, and he told me how loved I was. Of course, I couldn't believe that. I didn't believe anything he said. But I'm going to tell you that that was the seed that was planted in me to do what I do today. So in 2008, I started an organization called Rahab's Hideaway. I thought Rahab's Hideaway would just be housing for victims of human trafficking. I thought that's all these girls need is just get them off the street. Give them a safe place to go. Give them a non-judgmental atmosphere to thrive in and give them unconditional love. And I thought that would be enough. Till about two months go by, and I get a letter from one of the girls who had left the program. And she said, this is a good program for someone who wants to heal, but I'm too messed up to heal. And I thought I was going to just Oh my God, my heart was broken so bad for this young lady. She was 18 years old. She had been trafficked since she was 13. And I thought, oh my gosh, we have to do something to help her. I also didn't understand the opiate addiction that would come along with traffic victims. I didn't understand the levels of trauma. I knew the abuse because I had been abused myself very badly. But I didn't understand the levels of trauma and addiction that they had actually gone through. 
See, when I was trafficked, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, <laughs> but when I was trafficked, um, was a long time ago, there was no such thing called crack. There was no such thing, you know, heroin was very, heroin was very expensive back then, so they weren't on heroin like they are today. But I can tell you today it's a different story. Just last week in Ohio, in Columbus, I took three ladies over to Mary Haven. These women are in their between 18 and 20 years old, and they have an opiate addiction that's unbelievable. And you may think that, well, just get them some help to get off the drugs and, and they'll be okay, but it's just not that simple, especially when you have a trafficker that's giving you drugs, a trafficker that's controlling you by drugs. So I'm really grateful to say that there has been some opportunities to collaborate with a drug rehab organization and we're getting the girls the help they need. But I still realized that just was not enough. So in 2015, I'm sorry, 2016, I started something called The Switch. And The Switch, the switch is basically an organization that is, has groomed to switch the mindsets of people to change your perception. See, you probably think a, a train track is something that trains just go by on. But actually, a track is where girls and little girls and women are sold every day in Columbus, Ohio, on Main Street, Sullivan Avenue, and Broad Street. And all my life, I would have never thought in a million years that Cleveland Avenue would be known as a kitty track. A kitty track. Just in case you don't know what a kitty track is, that's the track where girls from 12 to 17 walk on. And see, there's rules to the game. And this game, if you are not, in, not within that age group and you walk on the track, you're subject to punishment by traffickers. So let's say you're an adult and um, you walk on one side of the street, and the kids walk on another side of the street. But you don't know who these guys are, you don't know who's who, who's who. There's so many rules to the game that most people don't know. So if a kid is between 12 and 17 and, and she's walking down the adult track and doesn't even know that she's on an adult track, she's subject and she just became vulnerable to being trafficked. She has no idea what's going on. There is so much going on in our city. It's an absolute underground, a world that most people well, can't even wrap their minds around. And I hope to God that you will never come to know. But there is an answer, and I'm grateful for that, being a part of that solution. So most people, when I tell this story, they have a lot of emotions going on. They get angry. They want to do something. And I'm sure some of you in here today, you just feel like, what can we do about this issue? I have kids. I have grandkids. Certainly something can be done. Well, yeah, there's a lot that can be done. So I want to ask you this question. What if? What if you could do what you love to fight what you hate? Just simply ask yourself that question, just what if? See, we here at Rahab's Hideaway in the Switch, we're not asking you to come over and, and clean toilets or even work with traffic victims because that's not your, most traffic victims are not your little girls with ponytails and bobby socks. Those girls have levels of trauma that some we may never be able to deal with. But there's always something you can do. So when you ask yourself that question, what if? What if you could do what you love to fight what you hate? This is such a social justice issue that if you're not from Ohio, just name your street. Because I guarantee you it's happening. I travel all over the world from here to Italy. And I've been told by law enforcement in some countries, oh, that doesn't happen in our, in our country. And I go and I'll do an education and awareness event, and within 10, 12 days, I'm getting a phone call saying, we just had our first bust. So I'm telling you all, if you don't see it or if you think you don't see it, just look a little closer. If you think that these women out here on the streets because it's a choice, just look a little closer. When I first started Rahab's Hideaway, we would go out on the street, 
and we would go out three nights a week. We did surveys on the streets. Oh my goodness, I was baffled by the people that were actually on the streets. The nurses, I ran into one nurse on the west side of Columbus, and I asked her, how in the world did you get here? And she said, I was a nurse at Riverside Hospital. I had a great career, a husband, a home, kids. I got into a car accident, and after the car accident, they gave me Oxycontin. Oxycontin led me on to a heroin addiction. And that heroin addiction led me to prostitution. And you might say to yourself, well, that's not human trafficking. Let me tell you something. The definition of human trafficking is a commercial sex act by force, fraud, or coercion. Now tell me what she trafficked. Why, because she didn't have the big pimp with the platform shoes and the long maxi coat? Oh yeah, she was trafficked. Because she was trafficked by life. She was trafficked by an addiction. And whenever you get out on the streets as a traffic victim or a woman that's being exploited, you may go out there because, she may have went out there because of that addiction. But I can guarantee you it's something called a renegade. And so renegades are those that are, don't have a pimp or a controller. And once men or women, the pimps, the traffickers, realize that you're out there all alone, nobody to protect you, no one to cover you, oh, you just became a prey. So it's only a matter of time where you're being exploited on a whole nother level. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you tonight that this is real. There's so many myths and misconceptions when it comes to human trafficking, I am asking you, I'm absolutely begging you to just research it. Go online, there is so much information. Our attorney general and our governor is doing a phenomenal job at giving us information on human trafficking. There's a monthly newsletter that tells us how many victims and how many cases are being prosecuted right now in central Ohio. And I know most people say, well, I don't live near Sullivan and I don't live near Broad Street or Main Street. Well, like I said, I was trafficked in Muirfield. I was trafficked in Highland Lakes. I was trafficked in corner horse shows and NFL games and tennis tournaments. See, human trafficking has no respect to persons. Doesn't care if you're male or female. Doesn't care if you're black or white. Human trafficking is a green issue. It is a 39 to $44 billion a year issue. All on the backs of little kids. All on the backs of vulnerable people. I just recently met a juvenile court judge who was a survivor of domestic minor sex trafficking. It hits everyone, ladies and gentlemen. And unless we begin to empower our communities, unless we begin to educate our children, and unless we begin to fight on the demand side of this issue, we'll never get rid of the issue. The demand side are the buyers, the Johns, the men that buy sex. We have absolutely have to come up with a plan to end the demand. Because without a demand, there needs to be no supply. I hope you decide to do something about this issue today. Thank you. God bless you.